In today's show, I'm joined by Alex Reclean of Rotowire, and we're going to talk fantasy basketball all-stars. Is Michael Bolton an all-star? You're going to have to wait and find out. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. As I said, I'm going to be joined by Alex Reclean. We're going to talk fantasy basketball all-stars. So I'll just let the man himself explain what we're doing. Let's get get Alex in here. All right, so here he is. Alex Reclean back on the show. Welcome, uh, Welcome back, Alex. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. It is great to have you back here. So I'm just going to let you go ahead and do this because you came to me with this idea of, of what you wanted to talk about because you're, you're writing an article or written an article uh, for Rotowire on this topic. Fantasy basketball all-stars. Explain it. Yeah, so I kind of try to approach it from the mindset of like the NBA all-stars are the players who have the biggest who have the biggest impact on being the reason why uh i think my screen went dark sorry about that i don't know why that is um hi oh um not sure why the video problems are happening so okay. but um the the nba all-stars are the players who are the reasons why the bulls are winning or why the bucks are winning etc and so i try to find the players who are the reason why fantasy rosters are winning? Why? What? Are, who are the players that are commonalities between you know the people winning my home league and the people winning the league that you're in? Um, and so that's sort of my idea. Sort of my one point bullet is if I regret drafting you, you know, if I should have used my draft pick on someone else, then you you are disqualified and you can't be a fantasy all-star so james harden uh his average draft position was third um but his current rank is more in the six to eight range depending on what settings you're in i think that means that you were better off drafting curry or durant and therefore harden can't be a fantasy all-star uh by my definition fair enough i would say that drafting harden at three is actually okay if he falls down to number six but I understand where, <laughs> where you're coming from. Again, I, I think that yeah, dropping that far is not that big of an issue, but you're right. You could, sure. you, by the way things have gone so far, if you took someone else in that spot, you'd be better, whether that's marginally better or significantly better. The definition of being better is still uh, is still applicable. All right, so Alex, so check out, let's, let's check out who our fantasy guards or who your fantasy guards are here for this mm-hmm. uh, all-star situation. And uh, I'll see if I have any issues with it. Sure. So I started off with DeJounte Murray, Fred Van Fleet, and Darius Garland. And I think the first two were no-brainers. I didn't even have to look at a single stat before uh, DeJounte Murray and Fred Van Fleet were added to this list. Um, I, I think that Murray is going to be one of those players who we're asked about next offseason, who's the next DeJounte Murray? Um, and I don't know that there's going to be a next DeJounte Murray, a player having this kind of growth um, at this point in his career doesn't happen all the time. Uh, he, you know, someone putting up borderline top 10 numbers, um, it, I think he's had a really, really dramatically impactful season so far. Um, Fred Van Vliet, uh, I had him in the top half of my second round. I think you did yeah, too, I did. if I yeah. recall. Um, but his average draft position was in the third round. And if you drafted him at ADP, you are experiencing a massive, massive profit, and you are thrilled that he is on your team. Um, and Darius Garland, uh, you know, one of the bigger jumps that out there, um, you know, he's not a top 10 player. He's not a top 20 player, I believe. Um, but I, I do think that um, he's top 30, the, the difference. 
Yeah, exactly. He's top 30 and he was drafted pretty late. Um, Many people drafted him after his teammate Colin Sexton. uh, And I think that he's been sort of a smashing hit. Yeah, look, hard to argue with that. The DeJounte Murray one, you're you're right. Like, it is hard to see a guy going from being what was considered a a poor shooter, because he was a poor shooter, to being an efficient player who was also, he wasn't a good passer either. Like, he just didn't didn't generate looks for other uh, teammates. And he's doing all of that now. So he's been great. Van Vliet, you're right. We we had him at the start of the second round, but he's even exceeding that. The Gala one's interesting. He was a guy that I was more bullish on than a lot of other people. Um, and I definitely had him over Sexton. I didn't have him in the top 30. Um, yep, but same. I was pretty excited about grabbing him in that 50-ish sort of range. But that was still, you know, 20 spots higher than ADP. But these are all these guys where you look at and you, go, you feel pretty good about them. And then they've done even better uh, than you expected. And it's hard to go too hard on, on these guys. And, you know, because if we're doing this job of you know, talking about fantasy production and, and projection, you can't just go super hard and go, well, this guy was a 10-point scorer. Now he's going to average 30, 12, and 15 with four steals. You, right. Someone, in some point in their career, may do that. Like, it might happen. And you're not going to you're not going to hit on it. But it's yeah. irresponsible to just predict that sort of stuff happening all the time. Um, I'm very interested in your list of forwards here. Because I'm not as sure. Yeah, I was say I'm not sure. I'm quite on board. Maybe I am. Let, let's go through. Them. All right. So I started with LeBron James. I imagine that's probably a pretty easy pick. He yeah. was a second or third round pick. He's currently number one in eight cat and two in nine cat. I maybe I have that flipped. Um, yeah, I think it's the other he's way doing fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, easy pick. No need to discuss. Kevin Durant. Um, one of the few first round. It's Jokic, Durant, and Curry who are the only first round picks who are matching or exceeding their average draft to position. Again, I don't think you're going to give me a ton of pushback. Uh, if you got, if you had the sixth or seventh pick and you had, came away with the second or third, third or fourth best player, you're probably pretty happy. Um, my last one was Porzingis and this one was a little tough. I feel like forward, especially for the way I've defined this exercise forward was kind of the weakest position. Um, There were a bunch of really great options to choose from at center and guard, and and there was a little shaky at forward. Um, And I could have put Miles Bridges in here, but I feel like Miles Bridges has been trending down over the last month and a half. Certainly not as as good as he started. Um, And so I I went with Porzingis. I I, I love sort of the redemption arc. Uh, He has missed a bunch of games, which is a huge and legitimate knock against him. Um, but his blo- sh- shot blocking is back up, uh, not quite at his pre-injury levels, but but back to being one of the best shot blockers in the league. Um, and he's his per game rank, he's uh, 11th in nine cat. So yeah, uh, a little bit lower, uh, just barely in the top 20 in eight cat. But I, I think that that jump, especially from someone who I was fading hard in the off season, uh, I wanted to, Pay my pay my respects. That's fair enough. I, I get that. I I guess I don't have the same opinion on pausing this because I wasn't fading him hard, and I said he's going to be a top twenty player on a per game basis, right? And he's exactly that. And I said, do you take him in that forty ish range? And I think you're going to get a pretty good deal because he's going to fall lower than that. And I think it's worked out basically as I expected. So he, I wouldn't say he's exceeded any of my expectations. He's basically done what I thought he was going to do, and yeah. You know, this COVID absence has been longer than expected. He hasn't actually missed sure. that much time through the injury. And yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. And yeah, I was pretty big on drafting him, even though with that risk involved. The LeBron one's very, very weird. Someone was critical of me that, oh man, how dare you have LeBron as a second or third round guy? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's what he was last year. And I didn't expect yeah. at age 37 that he would come out and post the best three-point percentage, two-point percentage, uh, free throw percentage, steal rate, block rate, and, and three-point attempt and rate of his career. Like, you can't. No, uh, with, with the addition... would <laughs> be responsible. With the addition of Russell Westbrook, and you go, all right, and he's playing 38 minutes a night. Like, okay, LeBron's yeah. going to take it easy. The minutes are going to push back down. Yeah, no, that's cool. He's going to play five extra minutes and do everything at a career best. Like, it's impossible to have predicted that. I know you don't doubt LeBron, but it doesn't matter. He hasn't done this stuff, some of this stuff in seven years, some of this stuff literally ever. And he's been great. I would I would have put Miles Bridges in there, personally. I know he's trending down. He's still 40, 50 spots ahead of ADP. Even yeah. though, like, he started out the season as a top 20 player. He's probably about 40th. And he has dipped into that 50, 60 zone over the last month or so because for some reason he can't shoot free throws again. Like that, I don't know mm-hmm. what's happened with him there. 
Um, but I still think what we've seen over 40 games, the return on investment that you get from that late pick, he's been uh, pretty stunning in that sort of um, in that sort of situation. But before I get into any more, if you had a bet on Miles Bridges for most improved player, I can be feeling pretty good. And bet online, they want to wish you not only a happy Miles Bridges most improved player ticket, but a happy betting new year. Bet online is the number one spot for all sports wagering in 2022. It's a new year. It's a new updated desktop. Or you can go to their mobile site and sign up using the promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome deposit bonus on your first deposit. From basketball to football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait and take advantage of all of the great offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, let's go to centers then. Um, who have you got on the list, Alex? Sure. Uh... So my two centers are Jokic and Allen, and just on Miles Bridges, he was my number one snub. I even included him in the article as like leaving him off of shaky. So I I just don't disagree with anything. On the centers, Jokic, um, the first round, it was tough to get a positive return on investment, and Jokic is delivering as advertised. Um, And then I went with Jared Allen, and there were a lot of good options at center. I have multiple centers. on the on my fantasy all-star bench um so i have three centers on my fantasy all-star bench um so it was a tough competition but i think gerald jared allen's inclusion as a sort of fantasy all-star overall is really hard to argue with um another player with one of these giant jumps from adp to his current production um and you know another player who at least for me i i was not that high on Jared Allen. I, this is not. This is much more than I was expecting. No, nah, I was nowhere near this on Allen. Like I, yeah. I didn't expect him to be a playing the amount of minutes, seeing the usage rise. His free throws have risen as well. Um, I, I used to like him as a player. I soured a little bit on him, and then was worried about the Mobley situation. Um, yeah, I didn't expect yeah. this from him at all to be to be in this position. I think he's clearly got to be there. Now you may not have done this yet, Alex, but would you have him on your real life All Star team? I think so. I haven't come up with, I haven't gone through and listed the, you know, who my 12 would be, but I've, I have a hard time imagining I'd find 12 names to put ahead of him. I did not have him on my, I did on really? the end of December. I did not. I had Trey Harden, Durant, Giannis Embiid, DeRozan, Butler, Tatum, Levine, Van Vliet, Lamello, and Garland. How my 12? I can see Alan getting on there, maybe over Tatum, maybe over Lamello. Um, yeah, if I really I, do it. Tatum's a top 24 player, but I don't have him on the all-star team this year, the way the Celtics have been. Um, LaMelo is super fun and the game is better if he's there, but I'm okay with leaving him off the all-star team. I'd love to have him in, but I'm okay with leaving him off. Um, so I think those would be the first two that I would look at, uh, to put Jared Allen in. Jokic, you're right. Like he was the consensus number one overall pick. Did he not go at number one in any draft that you did? I don't think so. He there was one he didn't go, and I did. I did a mock draft in a point uh, ESPN points league, and I took Harden at number one, um, just basically to mix things up a little bit. Um, but that was the only one that I ever saw that he didn't yeah. go go at number. That's not true actually, because I did one on uh, with Roto World, and Steve took Luca at number one because he loves Luca. That was that was the only other one where he didn't go at number one. Um, so you know, he's just returned exactly what you wanted to, and that's what you want out of a first round pick. Just yeah. don't don't let me down, and uh, he's provided that. All right, so let's look at some uh, some bench or utility or whatever you want to call these wild card spots who else have we got in here so i've got six spots left two utility for two utility four bench is how i broke it down um i did the two utility spot i'll list all of them and we can go through them however you want uh for the two utility spots i tried to focus on sort of people who you probably got off waivers yep. um either they were drafted and cut or definitely undrafted uh with cole anthony and desmond bain yep. and then on the bench i had uh robert williams rudy gobert steph curry and evan mobley uh so those are my six <clears throat> names that are left and we can talk about them in whatever order you like. Sorry, my notes. Are yeah, look, Cole Anthony is interesting one. I think I drafted him in maybe one league, and I was like, oh, let's see what happens at the start of the year while Fultz is out, and yeah, maybe there's something there for him. Um, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect for me to be 40 games into the season saying, well, Cole Anthony is actually the guy that they need to 
not build around, but like Fultz can fit in where he wants and Suggs can do whatever he needs. But Anthony's minutes and usage, he's running this show. Now he has, like, you know, Miles Bridges dropped off lately. Like he can't shoot at the moment, much like last season. So I'm a little bit worried about where that's going, but you're right. Desmond Bain, again, he was a really solid last round pick, especially with Dylan Brooks out to start the season. And he has mm-hmm. exceeded all expectations and it appears like the Grizzlies are never going to be all healthy at the one time on that wing. And yeah, that means value just keeps going up. Um, it, I think it's actually better than that because there were some experts, you know, analysts, whatever, um, who were saying target Bain with your last round pick. He literally did not register an ADP on CBS, ESPN, or Yahoo. Wow, that's uh, wild. If, if, if you play in any of the main formats, he was probably undrafted. Um, you, know, may, you know, maybe some of your more ardent listeners are in particularly competitive leagues. And they, you know, were bought, getting him in the 180s, in the 170s, but um, l- completely unlisted ADP on those sites, according to Fantasy Press. Hmm. All right. I want to take exception, I guess, to Robert Williams a little bit here, because I don't know whether you got this, but I got it unbelievably amount, the amount of times I got this question. Man, Rob Williams, got to drop him. Yeah, like he sucks. He's the biggest bust of the year. Um, the numbers are terrible. The minutes are all the way down and he was struggling for a time and the minutes were down for him and he's picked it back up now. I would, I'm just going to bring up his numbers here. Like to me, he's not like his ADP was at like 50 something. He's not far off that number now. Like he's around that area. Yes. If you don't include turnovers, which I think is a bullshit way of uh, evaluating players as probably you're well aware, Alex. Um, I think he's sort of right where where we expected him to be, that fourth, fifth round sort of player who's been wildly up into a top 20, wildly down outside the top 120. And I think he's given okay value. I wouldn't say that he's blown us away in terms of um, the value, like in terms of someone who's yeah, killed what he did. Like Jonas Valanciunas had an ADP of 120 on, yeah. e- on ESPN. Like, and he's a top 30 player. Even He was outside top 50 on Yahoo and he's killing it. Like, to me, he's someone who I would rather have in, in that spot. I just think Williams has had plenty of uh, disappointing moments with some good moments uh, thrown in there. Another name that I'd chuck in there, maybe someone like a Seth Curry or a Bobby Porter, so you could have got really late. And they've, through to injury and other circumstances, maybe not so much Curry, but have established themselves as clear sort of mid-round yep. players. So Bobby Portis <clears throat> thought hard about him. He was one of the last cuts for this article. Um According to Fantasy Pros, you have the ADP of of JV and uh, Time Lord uh, meaningfully wrong, and that's critically important to why I chose Robert Williams over JV um, because I, I both of them were serious contenders, and I thought hard about what, both of what them. What did they have? Because I've got I've got the Yahoo ones here. Uh, according to Fantasy Pros, JV is 80th pick, and Robert Williams is 118th. Oh, that's, Which that's that's bullshit. There's no way that Rob Williams is going 118. <laughs> telling you now, there is no no <laughs> chance he was going there. I, I mean, so that was really driven down by one of the main host sites. I forget which one of the three. Robert Williams was, you know, like 180 in their default yeah, ranks. Yeah, it sounds like and so his ADP was his ADP was like 150, and that was still people reaching above the default um so it was people taking advantage of the system it's a lot of sort of very casual leagues driving that down and and i talk about this in the article that it almost feels like cheating to include him because you know me and jonas and a couple of the other people in the twitter sphere were screaming <clears throat> robert williams is a slam dunk fourth round fifth round pick this is obvious and that's basically the value that he's providing yeah but for a lot of your listeners they got him meaningfully meaningfully later than that and um, and for those people, I, I, that's why I included him. Uh, if, if, in fact, you are in a league where JV went after Robert Williams, then you should, in your head, replace um, Jonas, replace Time Lord with Jonas, because... I think in, in, a, lot of, in a lot of spots that would have happened, um, mainly on ESPN, I think in most other spots it, it wouldn't have, but I just think Valanciunas' consistency and overall production is outstrip Williams' anyway this year and yeah that's that's yeah, that's fine if hey, people watching this drop it in the comments who do you think has been the better steel all-star for this season because again it can very, really depend on 
how you value those guys. In some people were very skeptical of Williams. They're like, no way, man. This guy does nothing. He's not going to get minutes. Ennis Cantor, as he was then known, um, he's going to take minutes away. I literally people tell me now, Cantor's there now, man. Williams isn't going to play. <laughs> All right, cool. But people thought that, and obviously that's been proven incorrectly. Um, so we'll see how people view that. But before we just wrap this up, uh, Alex, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's early in the morning here, so I need some fuel to get through the day. And I don't want to reach for a sugary treat because that's garbage. It's a new year. It's a new me. I'm going to get shredded and ripped so much that these t-shirts are going to rip at the seams. And to do that, I need Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Instead of your sugary treats, which are so high in calories and low in uh, low in protein, I'm going to get a Built Bar. 17 grams of protein, mate, that's fantastic. 130 calories, whew, that's really low. Four grams of sugar, four grams of fat. And it tastes bloody brilliant. Built Bar. You promised a Built Bar to one of the other guests. Am I going to get a Built Bar in the mail? Mate, well, yeah, look, <laughs> they, they won't even. They, they've said I've had I've had about six or seven boxes here, but now I can't even get them to send them to me. It's like no, nah, sorry, I can't. I'm gonna do like roundabout like mail routing to get them sent here. I'm gonna send them to someone in the states, and they send them to me. Maybe I'll send you a, a box. You can forward someone to me, then you'll get get you to keep a box. We'll uh, we'll talk about that off air. But these are unbelievable. These are the best tasting protein bar. So get built bar. Go to built.com. Alex, I'm gonna use the code lock15. That'll save me 15% when I buy all these boxes. Built bar is built different all right honorable mentions who else did you have that you wanted to include but didn't um the two that we we sort of talked about curry with jokic and durant the other the two we haven't talked about is rudy gobert and evan mobley and i just i think gobert is kind of an interesting case because gobert is only here on the theory that most people who drafted him were planning on punting a punting free throw percentage and if that's the case then with a you know end of second early third round pick you got a top five player sounds like a fantasy all-star sounds like a smashing success to me if you were not planning on punting free throws then he's delivering exactly as expectations and should absolutely not be included on this list um but my assumption based on you know he was last or second to last in field in free throw impact according to your site last year uh most managers probably were expecting that again, and and so that's why I included him. I that 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 that's true. The if you have him, you're understanding that you're punting free throws, and if you drafted him, not understanding how punting free throws work, well, congratulations, you now know how punting free throws work because <laughs> that's that's just how it is. Like you're going to be losing, you're you're unintentionally punting free throws every week, and you're probably building your team around that. But I, I would argue the fact that you know people saying. Or you saying, okay, you drafted him at the end of the second round, start of the third round, and you had that expectation of hunting free throws, and now he's his top ten player. Um, but that, that's the whole idea behind behind the strategy. It's like you weren't drafting him at pick twenty four, thinking, well, if I'm punting free throws, he's going to be the twenty fourth best player. Your idea is this dude's a top ten guy in a punt free mm -hmm. throw build. I don't have to take him there, so I take him here. But that is the benefit, the value that I get in that spot. So I don't think that. Maybe again, people can correct me if I'm wrong. That if you drafted Gobert in a punt free throw setting, you weren't expecting a third round player. You were expecting a first round player, and I think he's delivering almost exactly what you would have hoped for. Um, I don't think there's really anything that he's done differently outside of your expectation um, from drafting him in that spot. There's more value, but that is literally why you would have picked him there because you got yeah. that more value. So I don't think he's really blown anybody away. He hasn't done anything to make me go wow that's hugely impressive it is impressive but it's what he's done for four years in a row so that's totally fair um but i think when you look at the field of players who were drafted with the intention of punting a category mm. um gobert is the only one who's really delivering at or above what you wanted Giannis? um you know I, I you know a lot of people drafted Giannis expecting to punt free throws and in a punt free throw build, Giannis and, and Gobert are like neck and neck in terms of, you know, basketball monster Z score. Um, a lot of people drafted Doncic expecting to punt free throws and or turnovers. Um, but, you know, in those punt builds, Doncic is much lower than his ADP. Uh, and, and, you know, the list goes on. I think that Gobert is sort of stands out amongst the I'm drafting this guy, therefore I'm punting this category as one of the only ones that's really worked out at or better than expectations. It's fair. Like he's again, he's just doing, I think, what you would have expected um, yeah. him to do, which which is 
totally fine. That's but what's what Jokic is doing, and you got Jokic on your team there as well, Alex. We're going to wrap it up there. Um, Thanks for coming on discussing that. I'm going to link your article in the description of this video so people can go and have a read and and more of your thoughts on this Um, and tell people where they can find you on the old Twitter. Yeah, uh, at my last name, R-I-K-L-E-E-N. Easy stuff. Great to get a handle as simple as that. Alex, go follow him over there. Alex, thanks for coming on with me. Thanks for having me. And that'll do it for today's show. Thanks everyone for being a part of the show or for watching the show, for listening to the show. And if you are following the show or listening to the show, follow it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app for here on YouTube. Give it a thumb up. Leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.